The American muscle car dominance of the 60s was not only restricted to the American market, many top brands in the country also targeted foreign markets with varying degrees of success. This success led to the brands offering muscle cars with specifications designed for their overseas customers rather than the U.S. market. And while some of these performance cars were crappy, rocked weird designs or were simply underpowered, there were a lot of cool ones. Number 7. The Chevrolet SS South African Model Chevrolet released the Chevy SS exclusive to South Africa in 1971. The two-door coupe was built and assembled by General Motors' wholly owned subsidiary in South Africa. At the time, the car was quite similar to the Holden Monaro GM released in Australia, except the South African version featured a different quad headlight setup and unique grille. The muscle car was a rear-wheel drive with the option to choose between a manual or automatic three-speed transmission system. The car could go from standstill to 60 miles per hour under 7.4 seconds and boasted a top speed of 120 miles per hour. Under the hood, the 1971 Chevy SS received an engine that produced up to 240 horsepower and 315 pound-feet of torque. While the car never entered the U.S. markets, GM ended up shipping most of the Chevy SS produced in South Africa to Australia due to high demand. Moving on, at number 6, it's the Chrysler Valiant Charger R T Australia. Chrysler releasing the Valiant Charger to the Australian market in 1971 was an aggressive attempt by the company to further expand in automobile markets outside the US following the new emission regulations. Before 1970, Dodge Chargers were among the fastest and most popular muscle cars in the market. The nameplate dominated the muscle car market from 1966 to 1971 before becoming a watered-down version of the original Chargers. Now, Dodge Chargers are full-size four-door sedans with powerful powertrains. Despite Chrysler building the Australian model on an Abadi platform, the car was ridiculously popular in the country at the time. While the Australian Valiant Charger could not replicate the dominating power of its American predecessors, it still received several badass performance engines, including the Chrysler Hemi 6 engine and the LA318 V8 engine. Chrysler ended up offering the Valiant Charger from 1971 to 1978 before discontinuing the line. Chevrolet Opala SS Produced for the South American market, the Chevy Opala SS went on a remarkable run despite never entering the American market. Several models of the car were produced from 1969 to 1992 due to the love and large number of sales it brought in. The car was so popular even the Brazilian military government issued them to its agents. Fun fact, the Opala SS was the fastest muscle car produced in Brazil before the Dodge Dart came along. Under the hood, the car featured a bunch of performance engines, including the 3.8-liter straight-six engine. The car could go from 0 to 60 miles per hour within 11 seconds, despite only having a four-speed transmission system. Also, most of the Chevrolet Opala SS models had a top speed around the 112 miles per hour mark and a distinctive exterior styling that showcased the car as a performance model. Of all the models Chevrolet produced, the 1978 model is the most iconic with its aggressive boxy design and the throwback classic finish. Before Chevrolet discontinued the Opala SS nameplate, two other variants were produced to target the luxury market, but they never gained traction like their predecessor. Number 4. The 1970 Ford Piranha Capri MK1 The 1970 Ford Piranha Capri MK1 is not just a performance car you couldn't buy in the US, it's also a very rare car. Ford, in 1969, wanted to replicate the success of the Ford Mustangs in other European markets. This led to the creation of the Capri Coupe nameplate, with the cars sharing a lot of similarities with Ford Cortinas. Of all the Capri Coupes released, the 1970 Ford Piranha Capri MK1, exclusively produced in South Africa by Basil Green Motors, was the best of the bunch. The car was the fastest performance car in South Africa at the time and gave imported performance cars a run for their money. The Ford Piranha Capri was a remodeled Ford Capri 300 XI MK1 that received a 5.0-liter Mustang V8 engine. It also featured an ungraded gearbox and new suspensions. The car also received several performance additions like a four-barrel Holley carburetor, performance-tuned air cleaners, an aluminum intake manifold, and a Boss 302 lifter camshaft, among others. The Piranha Capri could go from 0 to 62 miles per hour within 6.4 seconds while maintaining a top speed of 149 miles per hour. Sadly, the model never entered the US market. Hey, 
Before we continue, drop a like if you are enjoying the video, it helps the channel a lot. Now, moving on. In the third spot, we have the Chrysler Valiant Super B released in Mexico. The Super B was very popular during the Golden Muscle era as one of the cheapest Dodge performance cars you could buy. Vehicles with the Super B nameplate featured some of the best Mopar engines, including the insane 7.0-liter 426 cubic inch V8 engine. Unfortunately, Dodge only produced the car between 1968 and 1970, although limited edition Super Bs for some Dodge Chargers have also surfaced in recent years. However, one Super B that never got the attention it deserved since it was banned from the American muscle car market was the Chrysler Valiant Super B released in Mexico. The idea to build a Super B based on the Plymouth Barracuda Sports Coupe began in 1970, but the cost of production was too high, so Chrysler decided to use an a body platform instead. So, the 1970 Super B ended up being a Plymouth Duster with better engine and side stripes customization. In fact, the only difference between the Plymouth Duster and the Mexican Super B was that one featured the front grille of the previous US Super Bs and one didn't. Under the hood, the 1970 Mexican Super B received a 5.2-liter 318 cubic inch V8 engine that could produce up to 270 horsepower. By 1975, you could now buy a Super B that pumped out 300 horsepower since Mexico was never affected by the emissions regulation in the United States. Next, we have the Ford Falcon Australian. Unlike the other cars in this video, the Ford Falcon was actually available in the US up until 1970, when Ford discontinued the Falcon nameplate in America due to its disappointing run. In fact, you could walk into a dealership in the US in the 1960s and early 1970s to pick one up without any stress. The Ford Falcon released in the Australian market was also available in Argentina, Chile, Canada, and Mexico. The nameplate ran from 1960 to 2016, which shows just how popular it was. During the 56 years of production, the Australian Ford Falcon underwent many impressive changes that American Ford fans could never enjoy. One of the most popular models on the market is the 1973 Falcon GT, after gaining popularity for appearing in the iconic Mad Max franchise. The 1973 model could deliver 300 horsepower thanks to its 5.8-liter V8 engine. Another Falcon worth mentioning is the 1978 XC Cobra, which was a special edition car featuring 15-inch alloy wheels inspired by Ferrari and aggressive racing stripes. While only 400 XC Cobras were produced, only the first 200 units featured the powerful 5.9-liter V8 engine. In the top spot, we have the Dodge GTX. Now, the Dodge GTX is not to be confused with the Plymouth GTX released from 1966 to 1971. The Dodge GTX was never available in America despite being produced for nine years. Chrysler released the car exclusively in Argentina as part of a grand plan to create a luxury variant of the popular Dodge Valiant nameplate. Interestingly, the GTX was never truly a luxurious car, but simply a hybrid of fast and cool-looking cars. Chrysler opted for an A-body platform while building the GTX with the models all featuring unique designs based on their production year. The first Dodge GTX received a slant 6 engine, although Chrysler later added the option for fans to select a 318 cubic inch V8 engine before making their purchase. Meanwhile, American fans were left with choosing other nameplates as the impressive Dodge GTX remained elusive. And there you have it. Which other performance car did you wish was available in the American market back in the day? We would love to hear from you.